Sweet. All right, so everybody look up here and uh, what we found out, and again, I'm not gonna have you draw the tree or the brick wall, but, but what I do want you to know is that uh, you say, well, what's the idea about doing these experiments? Number one, why do we do them? This was the next step in chemistry, learning about what chemistry was, uh, how things interact. They want to know, uh, now we figured out how things are put together in a compound. Now, how do they interact with each other? And there are these numbers. See the numbers? And uh, we said that this could represent the little world, couldn't it? But it also could represent the mole world. One mole of that will not react with three moles of that. One mole of that needs five moles of that to completely use up all that. And it'll produce three moles of that and four of that. Now, here's something that's a little uh, higher level. This is a little higher level, here we go. The first thing I asked you yesterday is, uh, we eventually figured out all these grams, didn't we? And we found out that there were about 464 grams of reactants and about 464 grams of products. And it's like, wow, that's the law of conservation of matter. All right? And they knew that a long time ago, and that was, a, that was a very important thing in chemistry. Matter didn't just disappear. It didn't just disappear and go nowhere. But, so you would say that matter is conserved, or mass is conserved. But look up here, can I ask you this question? Do you think moles are conserved? Now conserved means that you, if you start with five, you end with five. Are moles conserved? If I start with 490, uh, 464 grams here, do I end up with 464 grams here? I do. Say matter is conserved. It means it's accountable. We know exactly where it went. It's even. But what about moles? How many moles are on the left side here? Uh, six. six. And how about here? Uh, seven. seven. That's not the same. So matter is conserved, but moles, they're not the same on one side of the, of the arrow as the other side. You got that? It's interesting. Um, all right, so here's what I was trying to show you yesterday. Uh, yeah, it was kind of fun talking about um, chemistry and brick walls, and and uh, you have to go down where moles live. And yeah, it's, it's just a play on words. And yet, what I really wanted you to get out of that lesson was when you organize your stoichiometry problems, put everything that's not moles up here and put everything that is moles down here, and then you'll be able to find everything you want to know and you know where you're at. Also, being in the mole world is the key to chemistry. And so that's why I put that down there. All right, so let's take a look one more time. Uh, what if you want to, if you have this many uh, grams of that, how do you know how many grams of that is going to react with? And you can't go from here to here, all right? So you have to go down. And I think you said something about go down, is that right? And so you dig a, a tunnel down into the mole world. So here's what you say in words, change grams of propane into moles of propane then change moles of propane into moles of oxygen and then change moles of oxygen into okay now what's neat about this is i can do this too watch once i'm down in the mole world i can go from here to here or i can go from here to here or i can go from here to here or here to here or here to here i can go anywhere i want in the mole world there's no trees to stop me there's no brick walls to stop me that's why when you get in the mole world, you can do anything you want with this equation. All right, so how do we go from grams to moles? Well, we did a whole chapter on that, didn't we? Yeah. Everybody in this room should know how to do that. I'm not worried about that. But what's new is when you go sideways in the mole world. And when you go sideways in the mole world, where do you get your numbers? The top. What do you mean? The top. Like the equation or the balance equation. What part of it? Or the ratio. I don't see any ratios. I I'm going to make a ratio. You make a ratio out of coefficients. the coefficients. No, no, no. Out of the co yeah, out of the coefficients. Yeah, All right. So right here in this reaction, uh, every time for every one mole of that, it will react with five moles of oxygen, and that's where I get this thing called a mole ratio. So the next test we have, I've been thinking about the calendar a little bit here. I'm trying to I'm trying to time it well. Okay. And so I know we have a homework assignment that will probably be due like on Tuesday or Wednesday, probably on Wednesday maybe, I don't know. And then we're gonna have a, um, I'm gonna have a, a quiz and I, I gotta look on a quiz calendar. I gotta, that's either gonna be Wednesday or Thursday of next week. And I'll have one other homework assignment. Okay, I'll have, I'll have like a quick worksheet. 
So I probably will have three, one grade will be around 50 points, one will be around uh, 20 points, uh, one will be around 25 points. <clears throat> I think those are the three grades that I can have before the end of the quarter. And then the following week actually starts the fourth quarter. That's when we'd have a test on this chapter, and that would be your first grade of the fourth quarter. Um, I, I will tell you that you could do, um, I know you could do, some of you, I, I said that last chapter, remember I said you could do well? Some of you did very well. Actually, some of you know why you didn't quite do an A. I mean, a lot of you got A's. Some of you know why you didn't, ah, oh, but now I know why I didn't get an A, and that's good. That means you, you, were, you were within striking range, just like in the basketball tournaments. A lot, of, a lot of teams that just in the last two minutes just get me within striking distance of beating this team, and then something might happen. But some of you got within striking range. You just didn't quite get the A on the test. I'd like you to. On this next test, just be a little more ready. Just try to be a little more ready. Uh, so I, I think we're going to have uh, uh, probably around 90 points left uh, for the quarter, and then uh, we'll have a test the following week, and that's the week where um, it's kind of a weird week. The seniors end up leaving, and the juniors end up leaving, and and you guys have your field trip, I think, on Thursday of that yeah. week. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. And then, uh, and then nobody, and then nobody comes to school on that Friday. Yeah. Isn't that right? Okay. All right. She's gonna go for courthouse. Oh, okay. All right. Hey, uh, let's go here. Uh, let me go ahead. Let me finish reviewing here, okay? So what we did is, um, does everybody, does this make sense? Uh, this is called the long cut, but I had, you have to trust me on this. If you don't know the long cut, then if you only know the shortcut, I'll teach you a shortcut. But if you only know the shortcut, um, and you make and, and you get a blank, you draw a blank. You have nothing to fall back on. So most of the work this next week is all long cut. Now, by the time you take the test, it's all, almost always multiple choice, and you can use shortcut, shortcut, shortcut. Okay, and that's going to pick up your speed a little bit. So even though I teach you a shortcut, I'm going to ask you to do the long cut uh, for a little while until I know that you're really good at this. And then if it's a multiple choice question, I don't care how you do it. See Mul that? Multiple choice. Oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I made, this weekend I got some uh, avocados and I made some, um, I, I got a oh, lot of avocados. So I got like, I got, I got six, I got, I, I got uh, six point oh two times 10 to the uh, I made so much. I made oh. a lot of guacamole. Oh! made a mole of guacamole <clears throat> okay um oh yeah okay so now are you okay are you okay so far on all this the new thing was the mole ratio and that's the coefficients right i think when i first learned this long 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 time ago i wasn't i didn't i wasn't taught this way i wish i had been i wasn't but here's what i got messed up on i thought this meant now, look, this is critical. Hold on. I thought this meant you had one mole that and you had five. No, that's not true. Even in this problem here, I didn't have one mole. What did I have? Two now, but the ratio has to be in that order. So if that's five times bigger than that, this has to be five times bigger than that. That's what it has to be the same. The ratio has to be the same. It doesn't mean that I had to have one mole that. You get it? Um, okay, now and that, that comes into play when I show you the shortcut. Okay, when I show you the shortcut, it's like, oh, I get it now. All right, and the last thing we did is we did the uh, uh, law of conservation of matter. That's pretty neat. And then the last thing we did was, um, without help, you guys did a great job. You looked at the blue box and you said, I said, well, how many, how many liters of carbon dioxide were created at STP? Well, you found out, you knew how many moles were created and so you change moles, and one mole of any gas takes up 22.4 liters of volume. And that's how we did that one. What do you think? And this is called a review. Review is where you fill in, you fill in the gaps. All right, what do you think? All right, so let's take a look. And Natalie, do me a favor. There's on that stool there.
this is going to be your um, homework assignment. We're actually going to do uh, two or three of these today to get you off to a great start. So you will need a separate sheet of paper. So we're going to do that. And this will be a, a way of reviewing. And uh, by the way, you won't be able to do the backside yet. We're not ready for the backside, but the front side, uh, you should be able to do any of those problems. All right. Everybody ready? All right, so go ahead and get a piece of paper out, and um, I don't want you to write in your work on here. You write your work on a separate sheet of paper. All right, let's take a look at the homework sheet. This is actually online. If you happen to lose this, I, I did put it online today, so um, it's there. And uh, so what you do is there are four problems at the first part, and then there's um, seven, eight on the next part, and six on the next part. And so let me show you how we're going to do this, all right? All right, so I got this out of a book. I kind of liked it, uh, so that's why I printed it. And it says here, it's gonna seem very strange to you. It says, an apple pie needs 10 large apples, two crust, and a tablespoon of cinnamon. Write a balanced equation that fits this situation. Then, how many apples are needed to make 25 pies? So, let's take a look uh, on your paper. Uh, let's start with the first part. Let's see if we can translate this equation says 10 LA, it says here, uh, an apple pie needs 10 large apples. So 10 large apples have to react with what? Two, two, two crust. Plus. I just made up a symbol for crust. And one tablespoon of cinnamon. I just made my own symbols up. And that's gonna create an apple pie. All right, I like that. So now, now here's what we do now. Notice the ratio, 10 to two to one, to one, you see that? You ever see that ratio? Now, the next question says, but what if I wanna make 25 pies? So, if you, wanna make, if you wanna make one pie, you need 10 of those, don't you? What if, you, what if this number is 25? Okay, okay, so watch. This is, um, do you notice this is 25, right? Yeah. See that one, see that one? Mm -hmm. I call that matchy matchy. Okay, now watch, here you go. To make 25 apple pies, you're gonna need 25 tablespoons of cinnamon. And then what, how many, what's the next number? This number is twice as big as that number, so 50 uh, crust, and then how many apple pies, or how many large apples, sorry. And that's how you write number one. So number one is, I just made up some symbols, and all the, all the authors have you do is to worry on these it's called mole ratios do you know they understand the idea of mole ratios now one more time do these ratios here are they the same ratios up here yes is this this is 10 this is five times bigger than that is this five times bigger than that yes then we're in the same ratio aren't we all right there's the answer for number one now let's try number two can copy that there. Uh, you, can everybody get number one? Yeah. yeah should, go ahead and write number one. That's, that's a gimme. So you, go ahead, you have to get it. You have to write it down. Okay. All right. Let's take a little time to write that down. So the first thing you write down is the actual balanced equation for making an apple pie. And then you put in the situation, but what if I'm making uh, 25 apple pies? And then you put all the coefficients in there. Now watch how this works on number two. Let's watch how this works on number two. <laughs> Now, I'm gonna start uh, showing you a little bit about shortcut, but later down here, uh, you're not allowed to use shortcut down here, but right here on the, on the top part, we're gonna show you a little bit about shortcut, okay? Is, it, uh, is everybody still writing number one? You wanna wait for you? Yeah, okay, let's wait for you. So we're gonna do one more of these, and then I'm gonna jump all the way down, and we're gonna do this one, okay? And all these are long cut. So we're gonna do a little shortcut stuff, though. Tell me when you're, um, tell me if you still need more time for number one. More time? Okay, let's look at number two. Two moles of potassium chloride and three moles of oxygen are produced. So I put them over here, don't I? are produced from the decomposition of two moles of potassium chlorate. It says write the balanced equation. Okay, so two moles of potassium chlorate are gonna decompose into two moles of this and three moles of that. Okay, everybody got that? That's called the ideal way that they react. That's the ideal way. Now, what's the next piece of information they give me? 
how many moles of oxygen, they want to know this right here. They want to know that number right there. How many moles of oxygen are produced from 12 moles of potassium chlorate? Oh, you're not gonna give me two? No, I'm gonna give you 12. So let me show you a little shortcut. You ready for a shortcut? Okay, watch. Um, see, two, two, matchy, matchy. Okay, so I'm gonna put 12 there. I happen to know that if you give me 12 moles of that, you're gonna produce 12 moles of that. Now watch this now, a little trick here. Two, three, two, three. Gotta get bigger, gotta get bigger. Now wait, now my choices are, do I multiply by two over three or three over two? Well, only one of those will make you bigger. Which one's gonna make you bigger? Three over two. So we're gonna multiply by three over two. So watch. Two, three. Gotta get bigger. So I'm gonna multiply by the mole ratio three over two. Now put that in your calculator. What'd you get? Well, I'm at this calculator right here. Okay. So what's th uh, what's three halves times twelve? Well, uh, six cancel six times three. What what is it? Eighteen. And that's how you do number two. Got that? A little bit of shortcut. Now, even though I don't mind using shortcut up here, uh, I am going to show you how to do the long cut again because you have to trust me. You have to know more than the shortcut. So now, leave a little space. Leave a little space for number, um, number three and four, and then jump down on your paper, and let's do number one, okay? Calculate the number of moles of hydrogen chloride produced from 10 moles of hydrogen. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to write the balance equation. This is called number, this is section 9.2, number one. All right, so, hey, thanks for giving me the balance equation. I'll take it. Okay. Now, again, I'm not going to draw the tree or the buildings, but uh, I'm going to put everything I know where it belongs. It says here, calculate the number of moles of hydrogen chloride. They want to know this, don't they? That's what I have to find. Produced from what? Produced from what? It says 10 moles of hydrogen. Is that correct? All right, so we're going to do long cut on this one. Uh, what's given? Okay, now I'm going to show you why the shortcut works. Ready? We're going to go over here, aren't we? Okay, when you go sideways, um, we're going to say, say it in words, say change moles of hydrogen into moles of hydrogen chloride. Okay, so we're going to get rid of moles of hydrogen and replace it with moles of HCl. And again, when you go sideways in the mole world, Tim, tell me where you get the numbers from. If you're going sideways in a mole world, where do you get the numbers from? Um, don't you get them from... Um, don't you get them from the... That's right. Exactly right. Thank you. So now, what are we going to put here? What am I going to put here? Oh, there you put... So look at the coefficients. Ready? For every what? For every one mole of hydrogen in this balance equation, it'll produce what? Two. Two? And so the answer is 20 moles of HCl. Now let's try the shortcut, and now you'll see why the shortcut works. Ready? One, two. Gotta get bigger. Now, you got a choice. You're going to multiply by one over two or two over one. Two over one. And that's why the shortcut works. You see? And look, if, didn't, didn't factor label force you to put a two here and a one there? Now you know why the shortcut works. That's what makes it more powerful. <clears throat> All right, um, let's do, uh, you wanna do one more? Yeah. Okay, let's do number one. Let's do number two. And why don't you do it and then I'll put it on the board. I'll, uh, I'll mute this for a minute and then you guys go ahead and work on it and I'll, I'll tell you, I'll show you the answer, okay? All right, work on this on your own. And we're using the long cut. He was on three. <laughs> what? Oh. No, it was probably, I don't know. 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 I don't
I know, I know the long cut's tedious, but I want to make sure we're going to do that for a while, and then I'll, then I'll release you from the, the tedium. Okay, uh, what do you, uh, I'll let you work on your own and see what happens. And See what happens is when you do it on your own and it doesn't work out, then you'll, go, you'll, you'll be able to listen a lot better. You'll know what to ask. So, do you have a question for me? No. What do you want to know, Freddie? Okay, let's take a look. It says here, it says, calculate the number of moles of chlorine, so that's what they want you to find, to form, what's it say? 14 moles of iron 3 chloride. That's your given. Your given is 14 moles of iron chloride. All right, we're going to do long cut and short cut. Is everybody almost done? We're getting close. Okay. And I'm glad you're doing it on your own right now because it's okay if you if you don't know how to do it. It's okay. We just started this, but you'll you should be able to say I got stuck. What made me get stuck? And I'll, I'll help you with that. All right, let's take a look. What I did is I wrote the balance equation first. So everybody should have written that down. Did everybody write that down? Now, the information they gave me, I put it down here because that's where moles belong. Moles would belong below this, don't they? So I put 14 moles here, and then here's what they want me to find. See that? I don't even have to do this, do I? They're not even going to ask me about this and this and this and this. They're not going to ask me about that. They really only want to know about this. So I, I isolate what I need to know. And here's what my given is, 14 moles of iron 3 chloride. Now, ready? If you're going sideways in the mole world, um, you get you use the coefficients. Now, you want to get rid of the label moles of FeCl3, and you want to find out how many moles Cl2. So let's take a look. What do you see up here? Hey, look. For every three moles of Cl2 in this equation, you'll produce two of those. Did everybody get that? Now, if you put that in a calculator, I think you'll get 21. Is that right? 21 moles of chlorine. So, and let's do the shortcut. Let's do the shortcut to see if it works or not. Now watch, look at me, look at me. I'm going from here to there, aren't I? I'm going from here to there. Gotta get bigger. So do I multiply by three halves or two or three? And what's neat is factor, factor label forced you to use three halves, you see that? Wait, shh, shh. factor label forced you to use three halves. And the shortcut tells me I should use three halves. All right, what do you think? Not bad? Uh, wait, why does it say like, um, like in number one it says produced from the most of it? Because it's giving you the product. Right. Uh, yeah. mm. All right, so anyway, here's what's gonna happen. Um, I don't. I don't see any problem. I don't see any problem with you finishing these, um, and even this one. But the ones back here, you're not quite ready for, right? So that's what we're going to work on today. So today, um, I do want to show you uh, another part of this, and uh, I'll show you another part of this, and it's kind of a neat. It's kind of a neat part. Um, I think I'll use. I'm going to use an example in the book here first, and then we'll. Then I'll uh, maybe I'll do a homework problem. Sorry. 
Okay, I'll, I'll make one up. I, I don't want to do. I don't want to do a homework problem yet. But <clears throat> okay, so now I think I think you have the basics. I think you have the basics down. But now let's talk about the uh, probably the harder part of the chapter, and this is called um, limiting reactant. It's the same idea, and limiting reactant product uh, problems. Okay, so we'll take a really simple, I'm gonna take a real simple um, experiment. And let's just say this, you're gonna take some hydrogen and you're gonna take some oxygen and you're gonna try to get them to go together in a synthesis reaction. And you're gonna try to make some water, okay? Okay, so we're gonna start with that. And so the question is, um, am I ready to start or do I need to do something else before I start? Okay, you always have to balance the equation. I hate that. When people do that, they don't balance the equation, then they miss them all, and you wonder why they miss it. So we have to have a balance equation, so uh, that didn't take too long. Right there. Okay. Are you okay so far? That's pretty easy. All right, now, let me tell you how I know that the problem is going to be different than it was before. All right, so here we go. Ready? How much, how many grams of water are going to be produced if I have 10 grams of hydrogen react with 10 grams of oxygen? And, okay. Okay. So, at first it looks like, hey, this is going to be simple, you know. I, I bet it's 20. It must be 20, right? Um, is that right? But see, what you're doing is you're trying to use, you're trying to go from here to here. You're trying to do things in a gram world, and, and you can't. And there's a tree there. And a, okay, so I know what you're thinking. <clears throat> it must be 20 grams. <clears throat> now, we have a problem here, and I'll tell you a little analogy I have. Um, let's say that we find out this weekend that there are a lot of people who um, you want to get some community service hours. And they said, well, it, we make peanut butter uh, sandwiches for uh, people um, and we give them down to the, the shelter and we want to make a lot we really want to make a difference and so <clears throat> I put um, I say Freddie you're in charge of getting going around all the stores you can and um, and just ask them to donate some jars of peanut butter and tell them what's for and just see if you can get any of those and then uh, let's say I put Fiona in charge of bread she's supposed to go around to all the different stores and find out how much bread she can get and so and I said tell you what meet up on Saturday morning and we're gonna make and we're gonna make so much so many sandwiches this is gonna be great okay ready all right so we get here Saturday morning everybody's ready I got like eight, you know ten people here ready to make sandwiches and <clears throat> if you're only here she actually comes early and she has a whole car full she has like 200 loaves of bread that she got donated and I said oh man we're gonna make like we're gonna make like uh, you know a couple hundred we're gonna make hundreds of sandwiches I know because she brought the bread for a hundred sandwiches. Now, Freddie gets here about 20 minutes late and he says, I am so sorry. Um, I, I wasn't able to do it, but at home I had this half a jar of peanut butter and I brought it. I thought that was better than nothing. So, so okay, everybody listen. We have a situation here. You think because of how much bread you think we're going to make hundreds of sandwiches, but with only half of a jar of peanut butter, you aren't going to do that. That's going to be called the limiting reactant. Okay, we have a lot of bread. We're going to have a lot of bread left over, aren't we? <laughs> See that? We're going to have a lot of bread left over because you're going to run out of peanut butter first. Now, what is a limiting reactant? The limiting reactant is you have to find out what you're going to run out of first. Okay. Can you guys stop here? I really. Uh... All right, ready? And thank you for letting me use your, your analogy. I'm sure you'd be. I'm sure you would have been here with plenty of peanut oh, butter. 100%. I'm sure. Let's try it. Okay. Let's now, ready? How did I know that this problem was different than the one I did yesterday and today? And here's where a little bell goes off in my head. If they ever give you the grams of both reactants or the moles of both reactants, a little bell goes off in your head and said, "I've got to figure out which one you're going to run out of first. And I'm going to show you a little trick on how this works. I'm not even sure how I came up with this. I didn't know it in high school. I didn't know it in college. I started teaching, and it just seemed to make sense to me. I have students who come back from college, and they said, 
they teach it to, and, and some of these people are going to, you know, NC State and UNC, and, and they're going to these uh, every, neat places, and, and sometimes they end up teaching uh, people in their class this, this method, which is, it just works. I'm just telling you it kind of works, so that's what we're doing. All right, so here's what's going to happen. First of all, I realize that this right here is a limiting reactant because you told me how many grams of each reactant. I've got to find out where you're going to run out first. So watch my trick. Here's my trick. I called the two box, the two rows of box method, the two box method, or the four box method, you might call it. So I have two rows of boxes. Now, notice I don't have just one row of boxes in the mole world, I have two. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is this is gonna this is actually more important than you think. I'm gonna put an asterisk here and put an asterisk right here. Now what I'm gonna do is <clears throat> I'm gonna convert that into moles and put it here. But then, watch now, and that's gonna be the story as if I was a person who brought the bread. The bread might say, hey, we're gonna make about 300 sandwiches. But then I need a story based on the, of the peanut butter story, don't I? So I'm gonna put a different symbol, maybe not an asterisk, let's do a, a smiley face or a star, and don't put it in the same row, put it in the next row. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna turn this into moles and tell the story in, in terms of the bread. And then we're gonna turn this into moles and tell the story as if, if it's, it, hey, that's all the peanut butter I brought. And then we're gonna find out what's gonna happen, all right? <clears throat> all right, so here's what we're gonna do. Um, so number one, let's try that. 10 grams of H2. And we're gonna go down into the mole world. So what do you know about that? How do we, what's, what's the equivalence here? On the bottom is two. Okay, one mole of H2 is two grams. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. And what you're gonna see is, what's gonna be that here? Five. That's five moles, right? <clears throat> now, uh, <clears throat> what's I'm gonna do here? In the first worksheet you're gonna have uh, next, next week <clears throat> is I'm gonna have one like this. Now, now I need to go here and find this one. Now, how do I go sideways in the mole world? And, okay, I got to get rid of moles of hydrogen, change moles of hydrogen into moles of oxygen. Remember, I'm in the mole world, right? <clears throat> All right, so where do we get numbers? Where do I, okay, the coefficients, so for every two moles of that, you get one of those. <clears throat> All right, let's put that in there. What do you get here? You can put that in your calculator. All right, 2.5. Now I'm gonna go ahead and move on down to here. <clears throat> and I know it's gonna seem strange to you to put this in here because you know the shortcut, but we're gonna do it anyway. Moles of O2 to moles of H2O. And in this reaction, for every one mole of that, you get one mole of that. And that's why it's a matchy matchy. Matchy matchy. Matchy matchy. Oh, no matchy matchy, my fault. No, there's a Here's a matchy matchy. My fault, my fault. For every one mole O2, you get two, uh, sorry, so this is five. <clears throat> okay, now, if you were the person bringing the uh, hydrogen, you'd say, hey, you know what? I'm gonna tell you how many sandwiches are gonna be made. There are gonna be five moles of sandwiches made. Really? Is that true? We don't know yet. Now we gotta find the story in terms of the other person. So let's do that. Change this next one. Let's go 10 grams of O2 and change it into moles of O2 and put it down here. You don't put it in the same row. Grams of O2, what do you know about grams of O2 and, and moles of O2? What, what are you gonna put here? Right here. 32. 32, right, okay. Okay, let's go ahead, give me a number on that one. Uh, I need a calculator, I can't do that in my head. I need help, 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 help. Hey, calculator, do you have a calculator? Zach, you have a calculator. I got it. All right, 10 divided by 32. 0. 0.3125. Okay, and three sig figs, I don't go below three sig figs. I'll go ahead and round the three sig figs. Okay, there's that. <clears throat> now, um, what if I want to know how many sandwiches are gonna be made? So let's go this way. Change moles of O2 into moles of water. And here we have, uh, oh, there you go. 
for every one of those, you get two of those. So this is going to be 0.612, right? 626. Six, two, six. Is that right? All right. So now, <clears throat> here's my here's your problem. <clears throat> if, I'm going to show you a shortcut on this too, okay? I'll even show you a shortcut on this one. Um, if how many how many moles of water are going to be formed? Is it this one or is it this one? The bread person says we're making a lots and lots of sandwiches, and the peanut butter says, "No, you're not. We're going to run out of peanut butter first, aren't we?" So guess what? This is the true story. The true story is here. Now, which one then is the limiting reactant? Which one caused this? So the limiting reactant is oxygen. In this case, oxygen is the limiting reactant. Everybody know the reactants are on the left side of the arrow? That's why I call it limiting reactant. How do I know that again? <clears throat> and I'm going to show you a shortcut way of doing that, okay? Instead of drawing all those out and all those out, let me show you how this works. Ready? Start at one of the asterisks. I'm going to start with this one. Ready? I'm going to do shortcut. Let me show you how to do it shortcut. Ready? I have five moles of that. How many moles of oxygen would I need to use up all this bread? All right? And you go two one gotta get smaller and you multiply by half and you get that so watch now i'm almost done i start with an asterisk i have five moles of that i i will re need this many moles of you to react completely react with me i need 2.5 moles of you and that's not happening you don't i don't have that many the asterisk the star tells me i don't have 2.5 moles do i so i am the what and whatever box the limiting reactant's in, that's the story that's going to happen. Let's try it again. One of the questions I have on the quiz uh, next week, it'll say, in words, tell me how you know which one's the limiting reactant. Here's what you're going to do. I have five, five moles, I have five moles of hydrogen. I would need, I don't have 2.5, but I would need 2.5 moles of O2 to use me all up. But you only brought 0.313 moles, didn't you? So oxygen is the limiting reactant. That's how I know. In three boxes, I know who the limiting reactant is. I've seen people teach this way. We, we put all the boxes out, and whatever's the smallest number, I've seen that. But this is much faster here. Now, what do you think? I'm still confused how you get the limiting reactant. Like, I know how, I see how you get five, five, but you, how do, where do you, how do you Okay, so you here's what you forgot. This asterisk, that box says, that's not how much I need. It's how much I actually brought. And what's his star say? How much I need. No. How much I brought. That's right. When I converted that into moles, I put it down here, didn't I? And that's how much I actually brought. So let's try it again. I know I brought this much bread. I need this much peanut butter to use up all the bread. Sorry. I don't have that much peanut butter. What? Then you're going to limit how many sandwiches get made. You're right. I am the limiting reactant. What do you think? Okay, now, I'm going to give you the hardest question I've asked all day. How about that? Here's a hard, wait a minute, the time. Oh, yeah, go. Goodbye. You got to go. Hey, have a nice weekend. Have a nice weekend.